Welcome back to another episode here on the Digital Classroom Dental Podcast, where I'm spending time with some of the amazing educators in the industry. And I'm very excited to be here live at the Dental and Medical Insurance Extravaganza in Las Vegas. Christina Taxon has put together a great event. We've got some awesome speakers. We've got a lot of great vendors that are here sharing their thoughts and ideas. And so wanted to bring on this afternoon onto our podcast, Ben Tuine. Did I say that right? That's perfect. Excellent. All right. Thanks. Very, very important that I want to say that right. And Melissa Dunham. And they are both from Veritas. Uh, ben also did a CE course uh, this, this I guess this afternoon and what have you. So wanted to bring both of them on and have them talk about some of the exciting things that they're doing with their company, but also have Ben talk a little bit about the CE course that he presented and things like that. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure being here with you today. Yeah. Yes, it is. Thank you very much so much for, you. for coming on. All right. So Ben, if you would start us off a little bit about yourself and, and how you got to, to where you are right now. Sure. So uh, a little over 10 years ago, I got involved in working with a dental group in Arizona. And that's really where I learned what I know about dentistry today in terms of uh, PPOs, insurance negotiations, coding and, and the like. Um, way back then, I recognized that there was an opportunity. I was trying to find somebody that had experience in negotiating reimbursements with insurance companies. and. I couldn't find anybody that had any experience. There was no company out there, and it seemed to be a, a craft that wasn't really yet developed in the industry. And so I decided to leave this corporate group to start a PPO fee negotiating company. It wasn't Veritas, it was Optimum Dental Solutions back then. Um, and what I found is just a wealth of opportunity in the dental industry in this space. Not many people knew how to negotiate fees, in fact, um, there's another company called Unlock the PPO, and they, they do amazing work there. And what, I, what I'm finding is that, they, so they started the same time we did. And what I'm finding there is that the service itself in terms of PPO fee negotiating just exploded. There was such high demand. You know, fast forward 10 years later, there's still only a handful of companies that do this, and the demand is still very high. Uh, so I, I come from American Samoa where, you know, they mentioned my warrior background. Most Samoans are, are in the, you know, that you know of our play in yes, the NFL, you know, yes, they, they have yes. that warrior mentality. Yes. Um, but in, in, in insurance, well, in the dental industry, I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but uh, Jordan, my good friend Jordan Kamsak, who's my podcast co-host, um, he's been having me do the Maori haka, ah. the, the kamate haka, yes. as a way of showing people how to negotiate with insurance companies. <laughs> So, you know, coming from this small island in the South Pacific and moving to the United States, going to school here, college here, um, and then starting a business uh, out of Salt Lake City, Utah, it's been, it's been very fulfilling to provide and give something back to the industry that is, that is needed mm -hmm. and that's relevant to dental practices. And then where Melissa comes in, so Melissa, I'll let you talk about your background, but let me brag about her for just a second. Sure. Melissa, <laughs> her husband's a dentist, uh, Tom Dunham. Dr. Dunham in Virginia Beach, $2 million practice. And I, I came across Melissa through our, own, through our podcast. Mm -hmm. She was a listener and she contacted us and I looked through her history and I was just so amazed that all the things that we deal with on insurance administration in the dental practice, she's solved. Mm -hmm. And she has, has what I refer to as the keys in unlocking all these insurance related struggles. And she's been in it for 25 plus years um, and so I invited her to be a part of what we do in the public lectures across the country, be a part of our curriculum mm -hmm. so that when we negotiate fees for insurance carriers, she cleans it up on the back end by making sure that whatever's built insurance in terms of the negotiated rates right. are actually being paid. Right. So Melissa, your turn. Well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's a really fabulous introduction. So you're just like a good pal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think what I find and I found also there was a need and it was very easy to discover is that a lot of practices did not know their rights. They didn't, uh, they didn't read their contracts. They didn't understand that the reference guides are published out every year and there was valuable information in those that would make their front desk jobs easier and uh, stifle a lot of the adjustments um, that are, they're just running rampant, um, basically making sure that providers are almost insuring the nation, not the other way around. Right. So then I had also developed um, just a system for putting that into place. I, I talk pre-authorizations all day long. It's not for the patients. It's basically for the practice. If the insurance company comes back and pays, it's cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Great. We're just using the information that's in there, a processing 
of how these they're going to cover certain situations or treatment and we put that into save it into their practice management systems a lot of offices need to understand how to put those information into their systems mm -hmm. so that they can track the information and then it can serve multiple patients within their practice. So there's a lot of systems that we put into place, review a lot of their forms, but pre-authorizations are where it's at and it, it, it there's, you've got to do it and, and yeah. it saves so much money and effort yeah. and time. It's hand over fist. You just can't go wrong with it. Yeah. We ran out of time today. Yes. But <laughs> a lot of people don't know the power of the pre-authorizations and a state like California there's other states that have a law that say if you receive a pre-authorization mm -hmm. the insurance company cannot deny the treatment right. and I was hitting myself in, self in the head like, it can't be that easy it, it can't be that easy but in reality in the concept is very simple the pre-authorizations are power in terms of outlining everything you need uh, to understand what's going to be covered, what's not going to be covered, so that the patient know what they're going to be paying to. Um, but what Melissa's knowledge and background is on, on all the aspects of insurance administration, it greatly complements what we do on a PPO coaching and fee negotiating side because too many times you negotiate fees for offices mm -hmm. and they get a number of denials. And so those fee schedules just become useless. Right. You know? Right. Right. Um, so, so two quick questions along, along those lines. The first is when it comes to pre-auth, it seems to me, and this might be a bold statement, that the reason why it seemed so simple, Ben, was because there wasn't people that were taking the time mm -hmm. to share why they thought, the, what was the real reason, right? What was the, the dental reason in order to be able to make that claim? And right. it's like for years that just was accepted that as long as the dental practices are not sharing that with us, we're going to, oh, well, we're not going to authorize it. Is that a, is that a correct statement? I think the or? reason why it's not been a profound need or practices don't feel like it's needed is because over the last 15 or 20 years of dental consulting, they've all told them it's the wrong thing to do, that it delays treatment. There's all these myths that go with it rather than, and then they'll, they'll have them eligi do eligibility for all these patients. I know some practices, they're paying $3,000 a month just to get verification eligibility on patients that may never come into the schedule. And yeah. never gets, doesn't even guarantee that the right. insurance is gonna cover yeah. the cover work it. anyway. And they say it's not a coverage, that could be a not a verification of coverage. Mm -hmm. Well, neither is a pre-auth, but you have a lot more ground to go back on to if you have that. And now that we've been pre-authorizing mostly in our practices and in a couple other practices, we're getting our pre-authorizations turned around in three to four days. And I hardly have zilch in denials. Right, mm -hmm. right. And my treatment acceptance is through the roof. I have a 97% treatment acceptance rate. And I put out maybe, I think it was last, what was the last month? 26 or 36, I can't remember the magic number of statements. It was so low, I probably don't even need to have a statement service anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so and it sounds like just by putting focus on this, you, f you found a way to be able to make the pre-auth process faster. You've got to get your pre-auth and you have to yeah. put it in your systems to serve your system. You're also fueling your practice management system with all this data. Right. You're building this information powerhouse that serves you hand over fist. So it's mm -hmm. not just the pre-auth. And there's a lot of waivers, um, not a lot of waivers. There's actually a really well-worded waiver that works well for me and a couple other practices. You put that on your treatment plan, patients sign it, you're free. The, the, insurance, the insurance mindset is, is taken over. And people just feel like these insurance companies are the boss. Right. They're not. We're just people that do business with them. They have no reflection in our business whatsoever. Right. We just need to help our patients and give them the golden question to how much does it cost? How, we don't know. How are we supposed to know? Mm -hmm. So we give it back to the insurance company way it should be. Right. Yeah. Easy well, peasy. And the other question, too, was what, when you realized, Ben, when you said you started to dig into it, you looked for someone that could help you, and then it was that aha moment. You're like, wait a minute. You yeah. know, I mean, there's no, mm -hmm. there, there's nobody out there that's doing this. What was your big why? I mean, did, did, did you look back and think there was a reason why nobody was doing it, or was it just because, just like you said, because it's just the way that it was? Right. And people just